All right, welcome everybody. So today we're going to be talking about tautological implications. All right, so something's called semantical implications. Uh, let's start with an example. All right, so here is a funny example. Uh, suppose the following two things. Suppose that if a cacatua is ata or bote, it is Cota. Okay, these are words that are just made up. Ata, bote, cota. They don't mean anything. So, but let's play with it so far. Okay. So the second assumption is that if a cacatua is bote, if and only if it's not cota. Okay. So again, we don't know what these means, words mean, but uh, let's go with it. Then our conclusion is that a cacatua is ata or not bote. All right. So from those two assumptions we get that conclusion. Does this make sense uh, without even knowing but what ata, bote, and cote are? Um, is, is, the, is the reasoning okay? Can we deduce the thesis from the hypothesis? Let's write it down in terms of like sentential logic. The hypothesis are ata or bote implies cota. So A for ata, B for bote, and C for cota. And the second hypothesis is that B, if and only if, not C. Bote, if and only if, not cota. And the thesis, whatever we are deducing, is that either A or not B. Eta or not, ata or not bote. Okay, so is this a valid reason? Does this make sense? Let's do the following. We're gonna, do, we're gonna generate a method, we're gonna look at a method to figure out if this makes sense. The method is using this truth table. So we start with writing the three variables, a, b, and c, which are going to be for ata, bote, and cota. And then we write the three sentences that we want, and we're going to analyze the truth values of all these guys, depending on the truth values or a, of a, b, and c. So we start by listing all the possible combinations for a, b, and c. Each one can be either true or false, so we have eight combinations in total for all of them. Um, if you look at them, here we have listed all the possible combinations, true to true, true true false, true false true, true false false, so on and so forth. These are the eight combinations. And now we want to deduce the values for all the other, for the other three formulas, depending on these truth assignments for A, B, and C. So the first thing is to put below each letter just copy the column. We're going to copy the column for A right now. Co the column for A we just copied. Now we are copying the columns for the Bs. We are just copying. We're not doing anything. Just copying exactly what the first assi assignment was. And now we copy the column for the Cs. Okay, this is just copy. Nothing to nothing about this. And now we're going to go into the symbols. So here we start with, the, with this disjunction. And then we apply the rules for disjunction to figure it out. And then once we have the disjunction, we look at the implication. Like we did in class last time. Now here we're looking at the negation, which is put the opposite. And then the if and only if. All right, so this is the truth table that we did last class. We're just doing it here kind of quickly. And we end up with uh, this uh, beautiful truth table right here. Okay, so remember to tell whether each formula is true, you have to look at the main connective uh, of that formula, right? In the first case is the implication, in the other case is the if and only if, and that will tell you about the formula is true or not. So here we are marking the positions when both of the first formulas are true, all right? That's because our assumption is suppose that the cacatua is at our, if it's at our body then it's cota, and both if and only if not cota. So our assumption is that the first two are true. So we have to look at the rows that correspond to the first two being true, all right? And those are those two rows that are marked with the little circles. Um, those are when both are simultaneously true. In all, the other, in all the other rows, one of them is not true. And now we have to look what happens in, if we assume that, like, so that means we are restricting ourselves to those rows, what happens to the conclusion? So when is that we get, do we get the conclusion is true in those two cases? Yes, we get that the conclusion is true in those two cases. So that means that whenever we have those first two formulas being true, the latter one is true. So it doesn't matter what ata, cota, and bote are, uh, 
uh, in all the possibilities of them being true or false about this cacatua, we get that if the first two sentences are true, then the last one is true. So our our reasoning here was actually correct. All right. So we're gonna write this as A or B imply C and B if and only if C imply tautologically imply. This is the symbol that we wrote out there. A or uh, that should be a not B. So that one up there should be a not A or not B. Um, so here's the definition. Suppose sigma is a set of well-formed formulas, actual formulas that we write in this language, right? Well-formed formulas were the legal formulas we can write. So sigma is a set. In this case, sigma contains these two formulas right there, the first two on the left, and then tau, let's tau be a single formula, which is in this case the one on the right, the one we are deducing. Okay? So we say that that sigma tautologically implies tau if, if every true assignment that makes sigma true also makes tau true, right? So every true assignment that satisfies sigma, all the formulas in sigma at the same time, also satisfies tau, all right? So that has, that's the same thing as, same intuition for what we had before, which is that to know if, um, the formulas in sigma imply the formulas in tau. We have to assume all the formulas in sigma are true. So we only consider the true assignment assignments that make all of those true. And then we see if those, all, if the, those true assignments also make tau true. When we have this situation, we write that symbol we wrote up there. We wrote that sigma tautologically implies tau. So that little symbol means tautologically implies. If you look at the, our example before, we have that there are these true two assignments, those two that I just uh, underlined, those are the only ones that make sigma, meaning the first two sentences, true. And we have to see that in those true assignments, the conclusion, meaning the tau, the one on the very right, it's also true, right? So that's what the logical implication is. Okay, let's look at one more definition. So we say that two well-formed formulas are tautologically equivalent. So we say that phi is tautologically equivalent to another formula, let's say psi, if each one tautologically implies the other one, right? So if phi tautologically implies psi and psi tautologically implies phi, okay? So that means they are true exactly at the same position. They are true in the same row. So if you do like the truth tables, they have exactly the same truth values for all the possible truth assignments for the variables. Yeah? So, question. Suppose we have these two sentences from the example and we put an and in the middle. So we put them together with an and, so now we have one sentence. And now, is that one tautologically equivalent to our conclusion? The conclusion that we had before, that A or not B. Okay, so the question is, uh, is the formula there on top tautologically equivalent to the one on the bottom, A or not B? Are they true exactly in the same situations? Pretty much what we know already is that the formula on the top, A or B implies C and B finally C, implies the one to the right, right? So let's, let's check this out. So if you put the and out there to join these two formulas, when are we gonna get true? We're gonna get true exactly when both of them are true. So exactly in those rows, when both of them are true, is that we get true. And all the other ones will just get false, right? So the first one is true exactly when the, well, if the first one is true in those two places, then the right one is true. So yes, the conjunction of these two in, in these two situations implies the second formula, right? So left implies right. But the question was whether they are tautologically equivalent. So essentially what we want to ask is the other way around. Now, does the A or B or not B imply the big formula, right? So notice that I reverse them, uh, right? So I'm writing this uh, again. So now we wanna see if whenever the column on the right is true, do we get that the column on the left is true? And let's see what we get. No, we get a lot of 
formulas being true um, on the right hand side, not just those two, but we get also a bunch of a bunch of others. We get that one, that one, and and the other one, which do not imply the conjunction of the formula on the left, right? So there are situations when the right one is true, well, the right column is true, and the other one is not. So A and not B does not imply the big formula up there, right? It's true, there are many situations when that one is true, but the other one is not. Okay, so question right now. What would be something equivalent to the big formula right there? Could we find something that is equivalent to it? And I'm gonna propose something. What about C and not B? Is that equivalent to that big formula right there? What do you guys think? Well, how do we do it? Well, we need to write down, we need to write down the formula up there and generate the truth values for that formula. So we copy the C column, just copying that column right there. Now we copy the B column. That's the one right there, we just copy. And now we go and look at the truth values with the negation, just the opposite. And then we look at the truth values for the conjunction, which is true when both of them are true. And we get the truth values, I forgot the last one, which is false. We get the truth values for that formula up there. And that's exactly true, exactly at the same two rows where the big formula is true, right? So it's like only the third row and the seventh row when both the big one, the big formula, and the one on the very right are both true. So this means that these two are actually equivalent, right? They're true exactly the same positions. Good. So our assumptions today are pathologically equivalent to cotta and not bottle. Okay, so let's just review, let's quickly review some important tautological equivalences. I'm just gonna list them right here, and I would recommend you guys try a few of them. Just do the truth table and make sure that they are actually tautological equivalents. And so it's a good exercise to do just the truth tables and see they are equivalent. Um, so the first are the associativity laws for the conjunction and disjunction, and if and only if. And it says that A and B all together and C is equivalent to A and all together B and C. Right? The same as associativity for plus and multiplication with the numbers, we have it with the ands and also with the ors. Right? So A or B all together or C is the same as A or B and C. Right? So the first right now there, A with ands is the same as saying that all of them have to be true. The second line is saying that one of those has to be true. One of those three has to be true. And then the third line is about the associativity of if and only if. That one is a tricky one. So I recommend you guys try to with the truth tables to see why that's the case. Uh, it's, uh, I would say, it's quite interesting. Okay, then come the distributivity laws. Like the distributivity for plus and time on like the natural with numbers. Uh, we have the same for and, and or, and this one you can do both ways. So we can distribute and over or, and or over and. So as you see, the first one we have A and B or C, and that splits into A and B or A and C. And the same one in the bottom one, you have A or B and C, and that splits into A or B and A or C. Right, so with numbers we can only distribute the we can only do distributive when you have something times b plus c, right? But not if you reverse plus and times. In this case, both of them work. Again, try to do the truth table to see why those are the case. And I wanna show you a few about the negation symbol so just to see how the negation works. Um, so first, the negation of the negation of I, A is equivalent to A, as you would have expected. Um, that's very easy to see with the truth table. That one I just wrote there is not really true. Uh, that's a typo. I guess I can't uh, correct it right now. But uh, yeah, that one is not true. You should check it out and see what's happened with that one um, and make a note. Let's move on to the ones that are true. 
So not A and B is same as uh, not A or not B. Bring the not separated, right? If, 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 if something is if it's not true that A and B, then either because A is false or because B is false. And if it's not true that A or B is because A is false and B is false. Right? Check this out too. These two laws right here are called the De Morgan laws. This is, it allows you to kind of um, factor in the, neg the negation symbol inside the OR and the AND. Let's just mention a couple other ones that are um, used to keep in mind. A and B imply C, that's equivalent, that's equivalent to A imply B imply C, right? Because if A and B imply C and you know A, then you know that B implies C. Try that one out at home. Another one that is uh, useful is um, that A if and only if B is equivalent to what you would expect. A implies B and B implies A. Right? So if and only if means arrows in both directions with and in between. And A implies B is equivalent to this is a, it's an important one, not A or B. You just remember for A implies B to be false, you need A to be true and B to be false, right? So for A implies B to be true, you need that either not A or B. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, of course, you don't need to memorize all these uh, tautological equivalences. Uh, it's useful to, I mean, they're all common sense and it's good if they all become common sense to you. Um, but of course, you don't need to memorize them, though I do would suggest you try some to prove some of them at home. Alright, see you guys next time.